Oh boy. All right. Let's see here. First time streaming, bear with me. All right. Hey, 1214. Let's see, make sure I can get this set up real quick. Last, last few things before we start painting. All right, almost there. Man glazed black. CVOC. We do know who it is. All right, let me see if I can't can't get my Instagram set up too with the creative vets. Almost. I think we're ready. All right, here we go. So for today, we're going to do a thing called finding color. If you only have a blue, a yellow, and possibly a red paint, you can make almost any color you need to, uh, to paint. Uh, if you have a cool and a, a warm from each. So how we're going to start, this is our finished product. We've got my, um, my cadmium yellow medium hue, and we have the cobalt blue hue right here. And we're going to mix them on top, and we're going to blend them down with the titanium white. I made this one this morning, and we're going to go through the process and make them together or make them with me. And hey, there's Bart. Hey, Bart. And make them together and uh, just figure out uh, what kind of colors you have. All right. So how we're going to get started today is we're going to take our paper. You want a good density, thick paper, um, anything thin. And you're going to risk that, that acrylic paint bleeding through or just making it uh, warp and change shape on you. So the paper we're using today is a Bristol heavyweight. Um, this is a hundred pound paper. And it's a hundred pound paper. Uh, it's got a little bit of grit, a little bit of texture, but it's pretty smooth. All right. So we got our paper. Hey, Karen, we got our paper. And the first thing we're gonna do is we are going to make a five by five grid or as many different squares and grids as you want. I'm doing five by five, I'm doing an inch on each. So I'm gonna take my ruler. As you can see, this is not exactly an artist ruler. This is a construction ruler, construction square uh, or triangle. And I'm going to utilize it in this fashion to make sure everyone knows that it doesn't have to be a expensive art piece. So all I'm gonna do, take my paper, make sure everybody, paper, paper. Take my paper, 
I'm going to draw a straight line on the bottom. I'm personally not worried about how even it is. I'm heavy handed. I was in the Marine Corps for 15 years. And so I don't really care about being nice too many times. Okay. So I've got this. I'm just going to make a little tick at one inch, make a tick at six inches, which will make it five inches in length. So we've got my ticks, got my tick marks, got my tick marks. I'm going to connect these, draw that straight line. And all we're looking for here is a grid. So you can be way ahead of me if you want to do five inches on the side, five inches on the bottom, and then connect them up. So we've got five down, five across. So uh, we're going to square this. And all I'm doing is laying it down on the bottom line. I'm going to straighten this up on the top. And this is very hard to do in my camera, but worse has happened. There it is. How about this? Got a squared right there. Everyone can see that. I'm just going to take a mark and put a mark at five inches down this side. That makes sense. And we are square. And we have a tick. There we go. Okay, I'm just gonna connect those dots, making the outside of my box. Okay, make the other side of my box. Doesn't have to be perfect. I will absolutely not be grading you. Five inches. Go ahead and uh, let me know where you guys are from, what you guys are filling your quarantine time with, what kind of art projects you're doing. So I've got my top line. I'm going to finish off that side. And I'll start making my ticks. So now I've got my box. My box is set up. It is squared. I have the outlines all made. I'm going to go through. And I'm just going to do a tick on the edges for the inch marks. So, got four, three, two, and one, and all on my other sides as well. So, there's my, there are my tick marks. Tick marks. Do the side. Two, three, there we go. And I'm going to rotate my paper and do it again. Got the one, two, three, four. Rotate my paper again, and I've got that fourth side. And this project today isn't about uh, being a refined artist or anything else besides uh, just finding some joy and finding some new colors that you didn't know you had. So um, uh, I just found out how to scroll in the comments. So let me check up on that. Okay. Yep. Right on. These color experiments are to find out what colors you have. Thanks, Garrett. 
This is, um, so if I only have this blue and yellow and a white, uh, I actually have a range. I've got at least 25 colors on here. Um, to figure out what colors you got going on and seeing if, you know, if I have a yellow flower I'm painting, right? I, only, I don't only have this yellow and the whites mixed with this yellow. I've got, I've got yellows, I've got greens, I've got, you know, different shades of that yellow. And, um, and it's also just a really, it's a, this is a zenful, zenful thing for me. I honestly, I just, I really enjoy it. Um, so I got into creative events uh, after, or right before I medically retired from the Marine Corps after 15 years and went to art school. I'm in art school now, I'm in my third year, about to start my third year at the School of the Art Institute of Chicago, pursuing my Bachelor's of Fine Art. And my first painting class I took, uh, we weren't actually allowed to buy any or utilize any, any color paint beside uh, reds, yellows, and blues. Now we had like four of each, uh, required to buy like four of each, but um, no greens, no purples, no, you know, anything. It was a zinc white, titanium white, and I'll explain those in a second. Zinc white, titanium white, uh, phthalo blue, ultramarine blue, cobalt blue, um, azilian red, queen Rhone red, um, cad, cadmium red, cadmium yellow, Hansa yellow, um, that kind of thing. And what we did was we figured out how many different colors we had in our palette um, by just those colors and the combination of, and it was, it was really fascinating to me when I found that. Um, and then throughout art school, I've had to tell you what, I'm going to redo this line right here real quick. Uh, I've had to redo that, these squares. I probably made 30 of these squares in my uh, few painting classes I've taken at art school. Um, and yeah, honestly, I've just really enjoyed them along the way. So I figured it'd be a great thing to, uh, you know, pass on to the community and see who else wanted some, you know, a nice zenful activity to pass the time in quarantine or if not only to pass the time, to figure out your palette. Um, one of our past participants was online saying how he didn't have uh, any more greens to explore. And when I talked to him about that, I did explain to him that he had so many more greens than he was realizing because he wasn't counting all of his mixtures that he can do. So here's my box. It's gridded out. Got five and I've got five right here on the gram, here for everyone else. And what we're going to do is this morning, I utilized, I used the cobalt blue and the cadmium yellow, okay? Now here's an off thing to think about, uh, side note, when you're buying paints in the future, uh, this cobalt blue hue, whenever it says a hue, that actually means it's a combination of different colors. And if you look on the paint, I'll use this one, it's easier to tell. If you look on the paint, it'll tell you what their pigments are. So right here, you have unfocusing. Okay, I'm not sure if that's focused or not, but we have PY83 and PY42. And for everyone else, PY83, PY42. So what does that mean? Pigment yellow is PY. 83 is actually uh, the darinide yellow, and 42 is actually uh, translucent yellow iron oxide. So this yellow, the cadmium yellow medium hue, is a hue because it's made up of different colors, different pures, and um, uh, so it's a, it's a combination of two. So Personally, when I buy paints, I look for pure hues. That way you're starting fresh. And if I want to mix a Hansa yellow with another color, I'm not worried about having another, uh, the dye dried yellow being mixed in, okay? So an example of what is not mixed is a titanium white. 
Titanium white is your solid white you're going to use for most white things. It is um, uh, it is very opaque. It's not translucent. And um, zinc white is what you want for that. But titanium white, titanium white, and on the side you see it's PY6, which is um, titanium white. Okay, the PY6. So that's a pure, this is a pure color, okay? Um, real quick about paints as well. Paints have three, three um, ingredients. They have the pigment, which is what you actually see. It has the binder, which helps the pigment float, and it has the drying agent. So in this, the binder is acrylic resin, and the drying agent is going to be, I believe, the air. It's what dries out acrylic paint. So for example, in oil paints, the binder is an oil and the pigment is the same type of pigment, but it has a different float, okay? So um, if we can get into like this, this bright green, bright aqua green, okay? Very pretty, very nice color, very cool. Okay, but it's actually made out of PG7, PG15, and PY6. All right, so we've already covered the PY6. That's your white. So if we use this for this exercise, immediately in my pure corner, it's going to have white already. Uh, PG7, PB15 is phthalo blue and um, uh, PG7, uh, phthalo dark green and phthalo blue. So this is actually a green, a blue and a white. So if I use this in this, I'm actually going to um, not get as much out of it because I am going to be using the whites. Um, I'll, I'll see the whites that are already in there from the factory. Okay, so to start it off, like I said, so this morning I did this. I did this one. Okay, so to show you how many different greens you have and you know um, pastel colors you have, just from these two colors. Okay, I'm going to do another one. And I'm just going to swap the blue for a phthalo blue, okay? So by shopping the phthalo blue, it's going to give me so many different colors that I didn't see this morning with this piece, okay? So at the end, we'll compare and we'll see how many actual colors I have just from these four colors. So the blue, the blue, the yellow, and the white. Okay, so we've got our square. Next things, we've got a bucket with water. I have a palette knife for mixing. I can use a brush, absolutely. But a palette knife is going to get the individual pigments much more mixed together due to um, being able to scrape clean across my palette, whatever I'm using, be it glass, plastic, uh, the back of, a back of a cookie sheet, or um, wax paper, which I'll be using today to show you don't have to have all art supplies all the time. And I'm going to need my paper towel to keep my brush clean and orderly. And my brush. I'll be using a half inch flat. I'm not sure what the, the uh, I'm new to streaming everybody, so if you can't tell, you can tell now. Uh, what is the fire extinguisher or the gas looking? Garrett, Leo, what is that? Awesome ketchup, what is that? All right, so I am getting wax paper as my, my mixing area. How much does that paint cost? Can I buy a set of them? Yeah, you know, you don't have to buy you don't have to buy the big eight ounce. You can buy the four ounce or a two ounce. And I don't know, off the top of my head, I think each one of the four ounces, probably like four bucks, uh, five bucks. But if you can't, if you can't tell already, you can do a lot with six paints and a black and a white. So those paints being um, two blues, two reds, two yellows, and a black and a white. Those uh, those double paints are what you use uh, with the cools and the warms. So warm colors are gonna appear closer. Uh, cool colors are gonna appear farther away. And 
Um, yep. Also with mixing. So it's not necessarily a bad thing, um, but if you mix a warm with a cool, it's gonna turn out muddy. And if you look, if, you, if I have a warm blue with a cool red, it's gonna turn out a little bit bloody or muddy. Um, not like a crisp, clear color, but not terrible at all. As you can see from this morning, this yellow is very cool or is very warm and the blue is very cool, but that green, it's muddy, but it's still a really nice green, okay? All right, so start to mix it. All right, so first off, I'm gonna take my phthalo blue, which by the way, PB15, this is a pure, right? So that's fantastic. That's what I would buy if I was buying paints. And I buy a lot of paints. My wax paper for my mixing palette area. Let's see here. There we go. So that's all it's going to take. Okay. And for this one, um, I'm not going to use any, any water today uh, excessively. I'll show you how much water I'm going to be using on my brush. So I've got to dip it in my water, and I'm going to run it across the back, and I would get it closer, but I don't want to break my computer. But I'm just rubbing it on the edge of the of the bucket. So I want it damp, but it's not going to be wet, wet. Okay, so I don't want it splashing into my paint. So take that paint, and I'm just going to cross hatch it meaning I'm going to, from one side, the back of my brush, the other side, the other back of my brush, okay? So my paintbrush is loaded, and here we go. And like I said, I was a Marine 15 years. I am heavy-handed. I am a messy artist, and a lot of times I don't care about straight lines. So that's what we're going to get today, and that's all good. It's all good. You can do art however you want. Okay, so... So one thing about the phthalo blue, it is one of my favorite colors. However, it is very opaque. So uh, it's very see-through, okay? So it's gonna require two layers until we start mixing with the white or, um, let's see, I'll put this somewhere else where you guys can see it. So it's gonna require some other colors uh, before I have the need, or before I don't need to mix it with, uh, before I don't need to do two coats, rather. Okay, so I've got my paper towel, and all I'm doing is I'm cleaning my brush in between every every new square, and I'm drying off my brush. Makes sense? Cool. Okay. Uh, but I jumped the gun, and I'm going to put another coat on that on that first square. Nothing fancy. Uh, what's great about acrylic color, acrylic paints rather, uh, you can add a lot of water, still going to have pigment and they're still gonna dry and they're still going to be utilized. Um, so what's fantastic about that is, for instance, Roy Lichtenstein was the artist who did the pop art uh, comic book looking paintings, and he used a lot of water on his acrylic pieces. I think a lot of his pieces were oil, but he did some acrylic. He used a lot of water, and so what happens when you use the water is you can't see, um, when you use a lot of water, you can't see the individual brush strokes. Right. And so I can see my brush strokes and I'm okay with that. But if you don't want to use your, see your brush strokes, you can use more water. So there's my brush strokes. Okay. Uh, let's see here. There is a good square here. It was very wet and it doesn't have much, many brush strokes. So we got that. Okay. So more water, less brush strokes, but you'll have to do more coats, which is all good. 
just what you're going for. So my square, number one, 25, are on our way. Uh, the square is golden. It's good. We're going to move on. Okay, so my brush is clean. It's dry. My palette knife is about to come to work. Okay, I'll show you this first. If you can't see. There we go. That's a good looking square. 24 more to go and we're on our way. All right, so I'm gonna take my titanium white. Titanium white again is for mixing. Zinc white is for glazing. It is opaque. And when you put it into a pigment, um, zinc white, it doesn't mix. Um, fantastic, most tickets. Not sure how I get that, but thank you all. I appreciate that. This is going fantastic. We've got two viewers on Instagram, by the way. So remember, titanium white, most useful white, most used white, um, very opaque, covers things up. If I have, if I paint a hand on a painting and I want to then paint a sandwich in the hand, so I've got to hold the hand, so I have to have no fingers, right? So I paint a hand, I decide I want to change, I want to put a sandwich in the hand, so my fingers are down, okay? Well, to paint the wall right here to make sure my fingers disappear, if I were to use zinc white with the color of this wall right here, you'd still be able to see. You're gonna see right through it. You're gonna have the color, but you're gonna see right through it. If I use if I use the titanium white and the wall behind me right here, uh, my fingers are gonna disappear. So titanium white is going to help. Um, titanium white is gonna help cover things up. Zinc white is a glaze where you're gonna be able to see through it, which is great. It's fantastic. Think of it as like a filter of a lens. Okay. Any recommendations? Different brands of brush, different brand of brushes. Certain ones to stay away or to get. That is a class in and of itself, which we could get into again, but this is a white nylon, half inch, uh, bright flat, okay? That's all I'm gonna be using today is synthetic. So synthetics are not gonna pick up as much paint, but they're, they're good for acrylic in my opinion. They're good for acrylic because they are easily to wash out. So acrylic dries fast, much faster than um, oils, but, um, oils are able to utilize uh, horsehair, natural bristle brushes, and rough brushes to get some good texture on there. But also, I'm not colorblind, hilarious. Um, but also, um, you're gonna have longer to clean that brush up and maintain that good brush. But um, now play around with it. Uh, get a bunch of different, today I've got, yeah, I've got two synthetics. So that's what we're gonna be using today. Keep the questions going. This is fantastic. Let's hear them. Thanks, John. All right. So I'm going to take a little bit of that, that blue. Take a little bit of that blue. I'm going to put it down. I'm going to close my mail window that's popped up so I can keep reading your comments. Fantastic people. So I've got the blue. Okay. And I'm going to take a little bit of that white. And pigment goes a long way. All right. So if we can see what I'm doing here. So I'm pressing down into the into my palette area, which in this case, just a dining room table with paper bags on top and wax paper. And I'm really smushing it, smushing it, picking it up, smushing it back down. If you have your paintbrush, this is fantastic. That's totally good. I'll cover that in a second. Keep your materials and your tools clean and dry. Clean it off my, my towel and my palette knife is clean again. I can mix them with my paintbrush, but the only thing is when you mix with your paintbrush, you're gonna get paint deep down into the bristles where they match the, uh, the point. Draw a blank on that, but where the bristles attach to the actual brush, you want to keep paint out of there. Now, if you're mixing with your paintbrush, you're not going to be, you're not going to be able to avoid that. And what's going to happen is you're going to have paint deep down into your uh, into your brush. So, all right, we got to pick up some more paint, and we're going to do that second box. 
Now this box should be just slightly lighter, but we're going for an even gradient, okay? So the bottom is going to be white with just a phalo blue tint. So barely phalo blue, mostly white. So this box, and like we discussed last box, the phalo blue is has a transparent property to it, but already by adding just a tiny bit of white, uh, we're good. It will um, is now opaque. Okay, so I'm gonna clean my brush off and I'm gonna show you what we got going on. How's everybody doing today? How much white did you mix with the blue? Fantastic, I'll cover that in one second. So here's that good gradient. That's a good start. So we've got the blue and just a tiny bit lighter. All right, now how much to mix? Fantastic. So this is how much paint I have. Okay, that's what paint I'm working with right now. And put it right here in the same one. And I'll show you how much white I'm talking about mixing with that, that much. Just a little bit. When you're mixing white, hey, what's up, Finn? When you're mixing white or any other colors and you're trying to get just a tiny bit, you're talking just a tiny, tiny bit. And I'll really show you what that's actually going to look like um, when we're on that bottom square, because it is going to be just a tiny, tiny bit. So I'm ready for my third square. So I'm, I'm wetting the brush. I'm not getting my brush submerged. I'm just wetting the brush. Think of it like if I'm cleaning up a, uh, a spill in the kitchen and I've got a sponge. Is a dry sponge gonna pick anything up or do you need that sponge to have a little bit of water to get that up? So you get a sponge out of the cabinet and you wet it under the sink, wring it all out, then you can pick up your material, all right? It's the same thing with painting. I've got a dry brush. I'm not gonna be getting a lot. So I barely wet it. Take it on the back, and I'm just gonna dab it one time, boop, boop, on my paper towel and pick up my paint. So my paint, I'm not picking it up, I'm not scooping it. I'm just coming in and I'm brushing, I'm brushing one side, and I'm brushing the other side, all right? And we can always go back for more paint, that's not illegal. Here, Leo, I see you got a question. I will ask, answer it in a moment. Hey, Karen, what's going on? All right, so keep my brush clean, keep my tools sharp. There's that third, all right? Okay, a nice gradient. Now here on this, on this uh, section is where I like to go up from the bottom. So I've got my third, and then I'm gonna go, and I'm gonna go up to the bottom. All right, Garrett is asking, it's a good practice to add dark to light colors or light to dark colors. I have no idea, I don't know. I don't know if that's personal preference or if that's a real thing. Uh, Finn, real quick, I'm painting a color mixing chart. So if you've got two paints, you can figure out how many colors you can actually get from those paints. So. From a yellow and a blue, you've got 25 colors just by doing five by five. That's what we're doing. All right, so I don't know, um, Garrett, if you wanna chime in, I will absolutely read your response as you're a fantastic art teacher. All right, so I'm gonna go from the bottom this time. So this time, scoop my white. And this is all we're talking about. That's what I'm working with. There's my white. And here is what I'm talking about, about a tiny bit goes a little way, goes a long way. For the blue, for that white, I'm taking this, do you see that? You're able to see that? Barely, barely anything. Nice, Karen. All right, so. 
This should be white with a just a tint of blue, and this is not. However, it's going to work for my fourth square, so that's what we're going to do. See, just like that, that tiny, tiny bit overpowered all of my white, which is all good. Keep my tools clean, keep my tools sharp. All right. I have a pop-up. I'm not sure what's going on. I'll have to ask Garrett Leo later. Get my IT on the phone. All right. So this is going to become my fourth square. So I'm loading my brush. What's really great about acrylics is they dry so fast so I can touch anywhere on my paper right now and it's dry minus the blue I just put down. Okay, I've got my four squares. I'm gonna hit that bottom one in a moment. All right, so I'm just gonna take more white, add it to that fourth. So I'm gonna take a substantial amount because I undershot it last time. On oh, my grand friends. This is what we're working with. All right, all right. And flip back and forth. Go ahead and look and compare to uh, the colors you've already done. See if it is in that fact that that next one down or if it needs some more uh, colors one way or the other. All right. All right, and there we go. I've got my fourth, I've got my fifth color and my first column completed. Now I'll speed up the process a little bit and field questions from who has them. All right, so there we got an even gradient. There we go. And this is the phthalo blue with titanium white. So already I can see that if I've got these two colors, just these two, and I'm able to get these four different colors with all different tones. All right, so what I like to do is I like to jump right over to the other side of my, of my squares and hit that yellow or whatever the other color is. I like to do that, so I've got my pure and my pure, and it's easier for me to visualize what that middle color is. So this yellow is going to take a second coat, but I'm gonna move on to that second, second color of yellow first. How's that sound? That sounds good. All right, so I'm gonna take that yellow, put that down right here. 
make sure it's visible. Take a little bit of white and get it going, mix it in. So you're going to see this yellow is very aggressive. Uh, how it is out of the tube is it is hot. It is like one of the warmest colors, I think, for purchase minus the, the fluorescence. But um, with a little bit of white and other colors added to it, it really, really tones down. And it becomes, in my opinion, far more usable than just, you know, painting the sun's surface, if you will. All right, so that is mixed up. All right, I'm just gonna hop right into it. Load my brush. Paint that square. My first square is now dry, and so after this square, I'll go back and paint that first square again. Get a little more thick. If you do have a transparent uh, color on your painting and you don't wanna see your under color, you can just hit it again and again and again. There's been projects in school uh, where I've had to have been dictated on what I have to utilize palette wise. And some colors were very aggressive and others were very, very light. So for the light ones, uh, I just come at it again, you know, and there's been some that I've had to hit, uh, you know, like three or four times to get a good solid base to them. Uh, but yeah, just go ahead and hit them. And I squirt it onto my other square and guess what? It's all good. Quiet bunch. It's all good. Dinner time. Dinner, dinner, dinner time, dinner, dinner, dinner time. All right, first two on my yellow are great. Very enthusiastic, very happy. Good things are happening, good things are happening. Take a little bit of white. I'm just gonna add it straight to that other yellow that I just did to lighten that up even more for my third square. And I am smashing, and dragging, picking it back up, smashing and dragging. I think I want a little bit more white on that. Recommend going over the dark color as much as light in case of bleeding into the canvas. Yep. You can go over or not go over the colors as much as you want. Um, if the canvas is primed, which means it has your primer on it, it's not gonna bleed into the canvas. Um, but what's gonna happen is that some colors are more opaque and some are more, um, I think the word is translucent, drawing a blank right now, and other colors. So you might lose, um, like that thick colorness in some colors. Does that make sense, Finn? Pineapple Bob Ross, indeed, my friend. These are happy trees. These are happy squares. These are happy squares. Happy squares. And like I said earlier, I've done this about 25 times uh, and I really enjoy it. Jake wearing khakis. I want everybody to acknowledge Jake. Jake's fantastic. Jake is uh, one of my first um, collectors of my art and I appreciate that very much. And I've never forgotten that. I'm, I've never forgotten these things, you know, these things, I've never forgotten them. Um, if anybody wants to guess what Garrett Leo is doing right now, I'm gonna let everybody guess. And then I'm going to spoil the fun. Cool, Finn. I'm, I'm glad that helps. He's watched Sopranos. Guarantee it. Take it to the bank. 
Take it to the bank. All right, I'm three done on my yellows and they look great. It doesn't look like that urine chart next to toilets. Doesn't happen. Doesn't look like that at all. Oh boy. Garrett Leo says we're wrong. Let's get some guesses. Yeah, thanks, Jake. I appreciate it, man. Let's get some guesses going on for what what uh, what Garrett's watching. All right, so for the bottom square, which is mostly white with a tint, this is how much white I'm using. Okay. We're golden. Toss that down. Okay. And this is how much yellow I am using. We see that? Little goes a long way. Okay. And we're mixing it in. You can tell this is going to be good. This is going to be great. Let's see here. Tiger King was guessed. Richard Simmons was guessed. I'm going with, I'm going with Sopranos. I'm going to say he's a liar. He's lying. He's watching Sopranos. He's, he's watching Sopranos. That's what he's doing. Hey, be gay. He's watching Sopranos. Now they're going to take us off because, you know, I sound too much like him. All right. So I got that white. My brush is loaded. Hello from Houston. All right, Evan. Hello. I got my quarantine haircut. I don't know if anybody, if anybody else saw that, but uh, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not. I'm not angry at myself. Just to be clear, I didn't go somewhere to get it cut. I cut it. Quarantine style. Oh boy, is he gonna tell us? Is he gonna tell us what he's watching? What's he watching? Sketching mobsters. Oh, uh, here's the deal. I'm going to let everybody in on a little secret, a little one, a little tiny one. I like podcasts, big podcast guy. I don't listen to much music. Uh, so I listen to a lot of podcasts, and Garrett Leo does not listen to podcasts. Too good for him. Too good for him. Way over him. Uh, and so whenever I watch podcast or listen to podcasts, he always busts me down. All right, so I've got my white again. I understand this is out of view, and I apologize. I'll see if I can move it a tiny bit for you. There we go. And we're back in view. Look at that. What kind of podcast are we listening to? Let's get some Simon's Club. Simon's Club. What kind of uh, – anybody listen to podcasts? Anybody got any good recommendations for some podcasts? Got that last color for the yellow. Oh, gradient. Yes, it looks great. Oh, Finn asks, wait, Jake asks, pardon my take, but there aren't many sports on at the moment. That is a true story. I saw cherry spitting the other day on the Ocho. 
That's for real. That's real life. Um, part of my take. I've never heard part of my take. I've seen it. I haven't heard it. I'm a Broncos guy. I like the Denver Broncos. I love a lot of Denver Broncos stuff. Uh, dogs want out. See you, Evan. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Uh, Finn asks if Garrett, Leo, and I are doing a collab anytime soon. Um, yes, we are. We are currently working on it right now. It's going to be our two side projects, which hopefully turn into main projects. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to get another sheet of wax paper. And I'm going to get my new palette. Uh, Mike Covell, Trend Following. Talking Sopranos, new podcast coming out. I'm excited for it. We're very excited for that. It's a gay podcast. All right. Okay, so I'm going to move this for a moment. Get some new paper. Buzzsawcraft, hello. Oh, boy. Okay. DIY. Has anybody had these, by the way? Hop tea? I stopped drinking a few years back, and these hop teas are delicious. They are amazing. Just tea. Lots of hops. All right, so I'm transferring this palette right here onto my new fresh palette. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scrape up my yellow, pop it down. I don't know what side of this to use, but I'm using the side that doesn't feel sticky. And again, this is just regular wax paper. So in between doing this, I'm going to keep my tools clean, keep my tools sharp. So wiping off my palette knife. Happy little palette knife. Hey, Haley. Got my phthalo blue. Taking that over. For those of you who just joined, we're making a five by five square of uh, colors to find out what colors you have in your inventory by just having two colors and a white and also very relaxing, very zenful. It's a great way to just, you know, get rid of the quarantine vibes. So for those of you who just joined, I'm using phthalo blue, which is a pure pigment. And I am using cadmium yellow medium hue, both cheap or both the cheaper paints from Blick. It's an art store, nothing fancy. The studio is, I think they're like their second class up, but to be real with you, it's not good pigment um, comparatively with other paints you might find. Totally good for this kind of stuff, but you know, if you're making anything to try to sell or you are, you know, wanting to experiment with like, you know, the best kind of paints you can, you can go after, um, there's some other ones to venture to. And I can cover those in a later podcast or comments uh, later on. All right, so now we're looking for, and this is how I like to do it. So I've got my ends. I've got my pure blue here, and I've got my yellow here. Now I'm going to find my middle color and then grade it down with the whites. So I've got my blue, and I'm going to get a fat heap. All right, that's a technical term. I toss that fat heap right there. I'm looking for even of each. So I'm going to take another fat heap of my yellow, fat heap, and I'm going to mix it side to side, smoosh it down, pick it up, drop it back down. Just going to mix it all up. It looks really pretty when it's all marbled and spiraled but we are looking for a pure color. One, uh, I don't know, hue, I think. One hue entirety. So hit the top of that palette knife, hit the bottom of that palette knife. And I think this might be, show you what we're working with. 
think this might be a little on the blue side. So I'm just going to take some more yellow into it. Yeah, you know, that's what I'm going to call it. I'm going to call this my middle color. So I'm calling this even blue, even yellow. This is my starting point. So if you've been watching along, you're going to know. I'm going to dip my brush and go after that first square. Clean my palette knife and my brush every time. Not a requirement. I like to keep my tools clean, keep my tools sharp. Okay, John, I can hit you up with the different brands of paint. We can go over that one day. All right, so I'm going to take my green and I am going to load my brush. I'm going to pop it down in that middle square right on the top. And since this is heavy phalo, I'm going to have to go over it a second coat, which is all good. It's all good. I'll tell you what I'm going to do in the middle, just show you how versatile this can be. And it doesn't have to be by the numbers straight up and down, follow the directions, kind of jump around. I am going to show you, if you don't have a palette knife, how you can use your brush. The brush is currently preloaded with that green that we just found. Show the Instagrammers. Okay. I'm going to show you how to use that with the white and be able to find that uh, that bottom color. That bottom, mostly white, tint of green. Okay, so I'm going to take my white, pop that down, transition to my brush with my load on it, and I'm going to just paint that in we can't see that. So I'm painting, picking it up, putting my brush in circles. What you're gonna have with this is it's gonna be more streaky. I don't know if there's a way to get it completely the same. Okay, so got my brush and as you can see, very painty. Very painty, lots of paints. All right, so I'm gonna go for that bottom square. Very minty, this is a great color. But just to show you, you don't have to go straight down all the time. You can pop around. What I'd suggest is sticking in one column uh, to keep that uniformity. And then Clean my brush off. I am going to use my palette knife because I have it and I'm trying to save some of this. Okay. So what you're going to run into if you're mixing with your brush, like I said before, hey Jay, how you doing? Um, you're going to have to really get in there and clean it because the more the more paint stays towards the end on where the, the bristles meet the, the stick, um, the harder that's going to be to get out and it could ruin your brush in the long term. Just making that paint get in there, it's gonna make your bristles, your bristles sp spread out, okay? Take a little bit of green, tiny bit. I'm gonna add it to that, that lightest color we just did. Not sure this is going to be dark enough. It is not. So I am just going to hit it with a little bit more green quick. It's easy, right? You don't mess up. Can't mess this up. It's ever changing, it's flowing, and it's all good. I think that is good. Yeah, 
Yep, there we go. Okay, got that third one done in that middle column. It's gonna kick me off Instagram and I'm not sure why. Let me uh, end this on Instagram so I can reload it. Hello. Thirty-six viewers on the gram. That's good. All right, and we're just gonna go live again. And we're live. Hello, we're back on the gram. All right, so I'm gonna go for that second square. Take my green. Take a bit of white. All right, we're back. I personally like when you can see all the brush strokes, you know? I like seeing the artist's hand. If anybody wants to follow my Instagram, uh, see what other kind of art I'm making in my personal life, it's Zachary Aloysius on the gram. Go to, if you're on the Creative Ads page, uh, there's a few posts along the way that have the Zachary Aloysius in them. Uh, if you're on others, Zachary Aloysius, feel free or not. It's all good. Krista and Casper, hello. We're mixing paint. Mixing paint and figuring out what colors we actually have with a limited palette. It's fantastic. We're having a great time. It's a party. It's not as good as a podcast, but it's a party. Ray, hello, Randy. All right, that middle column is gone. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to take this green I've got going on right here on my palette. So I've got this green I mixed up for that middle color. I'm gonna take about half of it right there. I'm gonna use this to start my, my, uh, my fourth column. So this is going to be my green and blue section. We're all good, we can see this. Instagram, you're missing out. We're trying to get you guys on the other stream with everybody else, but technology's uh, just tough. All right, so I'm taking that green and I'm just mixing more blue. So it's going to go here. So that's a mixture of what we just made and the blue. So all I did was mix more blue. And this is a deep, deep blue. All right. I think I might need more of that green actually. Okay. Yeah, 
You can do this with as many as you want. You can do this, just this. You can do blue, yellow, and what they mix in the middle, and that's fantastic. You can do blue, yellow, and five mixes in the middle, and you're gonna figure out a lot of colors you have. Okay. So this is mixed up, very blue, very good. Good stuff, we're having fun. Again, very, very uh, translucent. We're going to go over it a few times. Or not. That's gold. That's good. That is gold and good. Good and gold. Okay, we're gonna take this what we just have. I'm gonna take a little bit of it because we don't need much. Got a little bit, got this much right there. Got this much right there. And we're going to, we got a subscriber, hello. All right, all right, much appreciated. Love it, love it. Take my old palette, can it. All right, so we got that color. Toss it right here, take a little bit of white. There we go. And that's a little bit too light. Add a little bit more of that green we just made. Big Mike's book. There we go. I think I like this more. Okay. Clean my tools. Keep my tools clean. Keep my tools sharp. And again, you don't have to be pretty with this. Karen, you said that you always make the mistake of starting with too much paint. You'll learn, you'll see how far paint's gonna go and how to, you know, how to put just enough on your palette to where you're gonna be done with your section and your paint's gonna be off. But if it's not, it's all good. Use it for something else. Put it in a uh, little tiny airtight bottle. Use it tomorrow. You got options. John! Hey, John, haven't seen you in a while. How you doing? John Halverman, everybody. Yeah, boy. And Vam, all the way from Australia. John, what we're doing today, it's going great, my man. What we're doing today is figuring out with a limited palette or with a limited tube of paint, how many different colors we can get. So we've got phthalo blue and um, cadmium medium, cadmium yellow medium hue and titanium white. And we're seeing what we got going on. So this is what we did earlier. So we did earlier, John, just to see for new viewers. And um, we're seeing how many different colors we can mix from those two tubes. So we're doing a five by five, um, mixing up some titanium white on the bottom. Alyssi, I don't know if that's a, the full name abbreviation, but welcome. Cool. Take it easy, John.
running out of pallet space. Power through, taking longer than anticipated, and your man wants to eat dinner. So I'm on my last square. So white and a dabble. A dabble do ya, if you will. All right? So a white and barely cut it. Okay, got my white and just a little bit of green. Nailed it. So I got into art through Creative Vets, uh, among a few other channels. But uh, medically retiring after the Marine Corps, 15 years, um, I got into art through art therapy, and it very much helped me out. And wanted to see where I could go with it and see if I could help others with it. And so I applied to the School of the Arts of Chicago, and that's where I currently go. Not now, because COVID has the world stopped. But um, yeah, it helps me uh, focus. It helps me see things differently. It helps me help people see some things that vets see. It helps veterans, for me personally, uh, see what you know they're going through without knowing that they're you know going through it sometimes. And um, it's been really great. It's been fantastic. Really, I, I really hope that if you're watching, you're following Creative Ed's on you know the platforms or the mailing list, um, and seeing what we've got going on, seeing where we're gonna where we're gonna be coming out to see us, tell the people about us, and also tell some veterans about us because it's a fantastic opportunity. Um, everything's free, and um, I've just found it incredibly helpful for myself. So enough of that. All right. So I'm going to get a new palette again. And we're almost done here. But like I said, these are, I just find these extremely zenful. I've done this at school 20 times. One of my classes, we had to do it for all color mixing of our, all of our color combinations. And I, I did not, I did not mind it. I, I enjoyed it. Um, so now I'm going after this color. So lots of yellow, a little bit of blue. Okay. Um, but yeah, I've done it a few times since on my own, even, you know, getting a new thing of paint or just, you know, playing around. You can also, um, you can also do this by having black on the bottom or a burnt umber on the bottom and fade up that way and use it to gradient. Then you don't only have to do it for the for white, so I've got a picture around here I'll find and uh, post it, or at least on the story on um, Facebook and Instagram story that you can see um, exactly how many of these I have and like different colors and you know to find palettes and things. Let's see, somebody's got something going on. Oh. Garrett Leo wants me to tell the story about showing my portfolio to SAIC. So for those of you who don't know, to get into art school, it's less about your tests and it's more about 
the way you see art and the way you've portrayed yourself and the ideas you want to get out. Um, and so I was in Creative Vets, a uh, three-week program at the School of the Art Institute of Chicago um, in 2017, I believe. And I, I enjoyed it. I very, very much enjoyed it. Um, I like the way they treated the veterans. I like the way they interact with the community. I liked a lot of the um, the things rather than just, I mean, I love the art aspect of it, but there's so much more at that particular school that I was interested in following up on. All right, now this, this color is very translucent, so I'm gonna have to hit it two, maybe three times, which is a, it's all good, it's all good. Um, that brush just uber wet, let's see. So on the show day, I went across the street just to see how far away my portfolio would be from being accepted to a school like SAIC. So I walk in just with some pictures in my phone of um, my work. And I had only been an artist for about six months. Uh, and when I say that, I mean in art therapy for about six months. Very translucent. Good Lord. All right. Um, and I went to the admissions office and I asked them, hey, my name's Zachary. I like art. And I'm wondering how far away I am from my portfolio. And the lady's like, okay, come on back. We'll sit down. And we sat down and talked about it and explained the situation out here. I'm, I'm here for the veteran program. Um, I like art. I like the way it seems that SAIC is interacting with the community. I think it's fantastic. I just wanted to know how far away my portfolio is from being accepted to a place like this. Um, she was, that was not normal. And so she asked to see any of my work. And I had my phone on me and I um, pulled out some pictures and she was looking, you know, looking. And then it got more intensely, it got more intensely. And she took the phone from me and, and was looking through my phone and takes a piece of paper and stamps approved on it. I got into the school right there. It was fantastic. It was amazing. Very cool. And it's been great. I really enjoy it. Tons of uh, opportunities, experiences. Um, I've done 3D work with ceramics, so printing ceramics um, with a computer. And um, yeah, John was there actually. It's funny. Um, and it's just a great experience. I encourage anybody to get on um, online, go to creativest.org and go to um, the mailing list and see if we're gonna have any shows coming your way. Um, and go and try to find one of the shows that we come through and it's, it's, it's great to see the veterans work, um, to see what kind of art they're making and it's, it's very, very cool. All right, so finally three coats for that top box and it's where I'm gonna say it's fine. Jake's back. So now I work at Creative Vets um, as the Chicago team leader, my partner in crime, Garrett Leo. Yeah, thanks Karen. My buddy, uh, Garrett Leo, who is the art director for uh, creative vets and couldn't be happier. All right, so I'm gonna take that green and I'm gonna put a little bit of white in it for that second box right here. All right. Wash my tool off, tool's clean. Andrea, how are you? Did 
this is just a translucent color. We're good. Missing out on that Chicago program, you know what I mean? Andrea was a, a participant in our Chicago program, a pilot program for six months, once a week, all different types of mediums. We'll pick back up, um, but it was going fantastically. Do you have anything to say about that? What, what are your thoughts on the Chicago program? How was it going? Um, we'll pick back up, but... Uh, Man, what a great program. That was, that was going fantastically. Ceramics, um, ceramics, glass blowing, and we're going to do screen printing and drawing. And then we're going to have open studio for two months, and it was going to be beautiful. Take a little bit of that green, put in that white. We're at the final stretch here. Hey, thanks Australia. You know, Australia, I've got a flag almost ready um, and it's looking great. I'm very happy with it. It took longer than anticipated, uh, the Australian flag. It took longer than anticipated. I actually had to resize it and add some material to it, but it looks really, really good now. Um, and I'll make sure you guys see it. It's going up for an auction actually in Australia, which hopefully I'll be going to on October 3rd. Um, and I will get it to you guys soon and get you images of it as soon as it's uh, done, but it is looking really good. I'm really proud of it. Just said, can't wait for it to start back up. Such an awesome program. I'm glad to be taking part of it. And now you're taking part of this. And here we are. We're still moving. We're still going. We're still going. We got good things. We're having a good time. We're having a good time. All right, our last square. Are we ready? Ready for this to end a little bit? Oh, we are cutting this one close. I tell you that right now. Load my brush. For those of you just joining, we're about to finish, but you're joining at the perfect time. You're gonna be able to see the finished product. Hello. I think we've been on for about an hour and a half. Just painting, having a good time. We're Bob Ross in it. We're Bob Ross in it. All right. So this is not my finest square ever, but it's going to get the job done. So here's what we've got going on. All right. So we started. We started with the phthalo blue. The phthalo blue. We started with the cad yellow medium hue, right? And we added. Titanium white. What's titanium white for you for again? Titanium white is your good white to blend colors. It's not a glazer, it's a blender. And here's our squares. These are the colors we went and found today. How about that? Now you're painting, you've got these good greens. You've got some like nice grass greens. You know, you've got some, some really solid, cool blues. All right, fantastic. Now look at this, okay? So we used two blues, all right? two blues, one yellow, and a white. And look at all these new colors we found today. Look at this. Starkly different. Starkly different. The cobalt blue hue gave us more pastels, right? Gave us more pastels up here. Let's see if the gram can get it. All right, so it gave us more pastels up here. And our, our phthalo blue gave us these really deep, cool cool greens right here and our phyllo also gave us this translucent look to this green right here with our yellow can you tell how much different this green is from this green look at all these different colors you got just from two tubes pretty incredible 
Glad everybody joined. We've had a good time. I'll take some pictures of these and get them up on the site. And uh, I appreciate all of you. Thank you so much. Stay happy, stay healthy, and uh, we'll get through this. We'll keep streaming. We'll keep you guys entertained. So uh, I appreciate it. See you guys later.